Today I wanted to talk about how to make a character move on a tile map like it's part of the, the tile map grid. And we will be using the custom data layers of the tile set to determine the tiles on which we can walk. And we're also going to use a raycast in order to not be able to get onto other entities in your game. So let's, uh, let's start. So I've created a new 2D main scene and I have imported the tile map that we're going to use, which I will provide a link for in the description of the video. Um, so first off, we need to set some project settings. We're going to have a screen of 160 by 160 and then we're going to make the actual screen four times that size. We're going to set the stretch mode to canvas items and then because we're working with pixel art, we're also going to set the default texture filter to nearest. Okay. Then first off, we're going to add a tile map. Get a new tile set. Drag your tile map into the tile set. We want to cut them up. That's pretty good. So now they're already cut up into separate tiles. And we're going to work with a custom data layer in the tile set that's going to define if something is walkable or not. And it's going to be a Boolean. And in order to define that on the tile set, we go to tile set, paint, select your custom data layer. We want to paint the tiles that are going to be walkable. So we're going to select all of the floor tiles that we want to be walkable. We're only going to be using um, some of them, but in order to showcase it, this is how we do it. Okay, so now let's draw our tile map real quick. Okay, now that's done. We're gonna create a new node 2D. It's gonna be our player. And it's gonna need a sprite. Uh, we're gonna use the Atlas sprite for now, the Atlas texture, because we have this tile map, which also includes characters. Go to edit region, grid snap. Uh, our tile set is 16 by 16 pixels. And then you can just pick any sprite you want. We're gonna go with this one. And we're going to have to position this player node to be inside of a tile map node. So if we place him over here and you click on the tile map, you can see he's exactly inside of this tile map cell. And we're also going to add a camera to the sprite because if we start moving the sprite, then we probably also want to make sure the camera goes along with the player. And then next up, we're going to start making a script. And we want to listen to inputs from the player every frame. So we're going to do that in process. But before we can do that, we need to actually make the input map. Up is going to be W. All right. So now we have some actions we can listen to. If we're going to listen to if a action is being pressed continuously, so every frame. And then we're going to also do that for all the other directions. There we go. And we're going to make a function that's going to be activated once we want to move the player. And it's going to take a direction, which is sort of type vector 2, and you're going to see why in a minute. Okay, so we want to give this function the direction the player wants to move in. We can do that because we know we want to go up and we can actually get the vector constant, vector 2 dot up. And if you look this up, you can actually see those are predefined values that we want. And we're going to be using these values to also figure out what the tile is going to be that you want to move towards. Okay, so this one's up, this one's down. You know how this goes. So now if we press any of the keys, we expect to see the vector 2 that we pass in to be logged. Okay, so it works. Now to actually move the player, we're going to have to do a couple of things. And I'm going to comment what we're going to do because that's 
it's going to be easier for us to implement. We need to get the current tile vector 2i, which is a we're going to get the tile map position of the cell that we are on. Then we're also going to get the target tile vector 2i. Then we're going to get the custom data layer from the target tile because we want to see if it's walkable or not and on the target tile. I'm going to have to do that in order to know if we can move the player there or not. And then we actually need to move the player. Okay, so in order to get the current tile, we need to have a reference to tile map because the tile map provides us with a couple of functions that can give us the coordinates of the tiles we're looking for. We're going to say current tile, which is a vector 2i, is tile map dot. I think it's a local to map, so we're going to convert our global position to a map position on the on the tile map. And we want to know the current tile, so global position of this object is going to be the current tile. And then to get the target tile, we are going to, which is also going to be a vector 2i, is we're going to make a new vector 2i, and we're going to combine the current tile vector 2i value with the direction value in order to accumulate the position of the target tile. Because we know which direction we're going, we can add that value to the current tile position, and then we have the position of the target tile. And in the constructor of this vector 2i, we're going to say current tile.x plus direction.x, because they're both vector 2. And we're going to do the same for the y value. And if we print this, print current tile. And if we also print the, we can actually use prints. We can also print the target tile. So now if we press, we should get 2, 4 is our current tile. 3, 4 is going to be the next tile, which is this tile. All right. Then now we need to get the data layer. Or we want to fetch our custom, our walkable data from this target tile, and we can do that by saying um, our tile data, which is going to be a tile data object, is tile map dot get cell tile data. It's going to be on layer zero because we didn't change anything, and the coordinates are going to be target tile because that's the vector 2i that we want to get the data layer for. And now we need to check if it's actually walkable. We want to know if the target tile is a valid tile to move on. So we're going to say if tile data dot, I think it's called get custom data. Yeah, walkable. And we're going to early return if we, if we can't move here so we don't get a coding pyramid. If this is false, we can't move here. So we just want to return. This function ends if we get here. If it's true, we're going to ignore this return uh, this return statement, and we can actually move the player. So we're going to say global position is tile map dot map to local. We're now going to convert a vector two y to a vector two for our player to move to, and we need a vector two here, which is going to be target tile because that's where we want to move. And this should already work. It's a little fast now because we do it instantly. Um, we can also make the player actually move to the point, wait till the player is there, and then process the next command. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, so in order to animate the player to its new position, we're going to have to do a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we're going to introduce a is moving variable, which is going to start out as false in this script. And we don't want to listen to user input if we are moving around because then we're going to wait until we finish moving and then we're going to listen to input again. And the way we're going to move the player is we're actually setting the global position of the player entity to the new tile and we're going to move the sprite back to the current tile in this frame of the game. So we're going to move the player entity towards the new target and then we're going to move the sprite back to the original position and then animate the sprite to the to move towards the new global position of this player object. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to get a reference to our sprite. And then we can say 
after we set the is moving to true, because apparently we can move now. Don't forget that. We can say after we move the player object to its new position, we're going to say set to the sprite global position. It's going to be tile map. And we're going to convert our vector to y of our current tile back to a global position for this sprite. So we'll map to local because we're going to convert a vector to y to a vector to. And we're going to pass our current tile. If we test this now, we can move once and then we can't move anymore because we never set this moving back to false. But we can at least check if the entity of the player is moving towards his new position and sets the sprite back. And let's check that. Okay, we can't actually see that because the camera is coupled to the sprite 2D. What we can do is we can convert this node to a sprite. And then we have to expand from sprite 2D here as well. And now if we attach a new atlas texture to this object, oh, my bad, to this atlas, and we pick something like this movement indicator or something. Now we should see this sprite move to the tile next to it and the player staying on the previous tile. And it does. So we set the player object to the new tile and we, we set the sprite back to the original tile. Uh, so there's only one thing left to do and that's we're going to move the player in the physics process function. And we're going to do that by First checking if we are not moving, then we don't want to do this function at all. So if is moving is same as false, return. And then we're going to check if we've arrived at our destination. And we can basically do that comparing this node's global position to this node's global position. And if they're the same, then apparently we're done moving, set moving back to false. So if global position of this object is the same as sprite 2 d global position is moving is false and we also want to quit the function uh, we want to stop this function right here because we're done moving we're going to listen to the next input um, so if we are moving and we're not at our destination then we want to move the sprite towards our new global position. So we're going to say sprite 2D dot global position is sprite 2D dot global position dot move toward. And we want to move toward our global position of this player entity. And we're going to give it a speed of one. Okay. Let's uh, check if we forgot anything. All right, so it's moving and we can keep on moving around. If I hold the button, it's just going to go in a, in a direction that we picked. And if I press any inputs while we're moving, it doesn't do anything. So right now we are on the tile map grid. Um, at, at some point, you're going to get more entities in your game, like other things moving around. Um, and we're going to be looking at that right now, how we can detect if there's something, if there is a collider in the next tile, and then determine that the player can move there, alongside the fact that we have determined the custom data layers on this tile map. So let's uh, check that next. Okay, so in order to detect other entities, we first need to make another entity. So go back to your scene. Let's add a new node, 2D. We'll call it enemy. And the enemy is going to have a sprite. And we're going to make a new atlas texture. Oh. Edit the region. I guess we're going to make it a ghost. Okay. Let's place it on the grid correctly. Like so, I think. Yeah, so it's on the grid. 
let's enable the grid options because that makes it easier to move around. 16 by 16. We move it now. Oh, we still need to set an offset. Okay. So if we move it now, it's always going to be on the grid. Say we put the enemy here. It's inside of the tile map cell, so that's good. Um, and we also need to add an area to D because we want this ghost to have a collider shape. It's going to be a, a square for now. 16 by 16. Okay. Um, and in order for the player to detect this collision shape, we're going to be using a raycast. We're going to set it to 16 because we use 16 by 16 grids. So this is pointing to the middle of the next tile. Only thing we have to do is we have to make it look in the correct direction based on which direction you want to move. Uh, and then we still have to make sure that this raycast detects areas because we're using an area and it's, it's collision mask set to one. And then we have to make sure that the area is actually, it, it defines itself as the layer one. So we are detecting it. That's good. So if we actually show the collision shapes and we move over here, the arrow will be red because it's colliding with an area and we are detecting the layer which this collision shape is identified as. So that's good. We have all the nodes in place. Now all that we need to do is go to the script, get a reference to your raycast, and then we're going to have to target the raycast before you move. So alongside the part where we detect if a tile is walkable, we're also going to make sure that there's nothing else on this tile. And the first thing we need to do is set the raycast position. We can do that by saying raycast 2D dot target position, which is if you look at the Raycast to these settings, this is the target position. We do minus 16, it's going to point up. If you do 16, it's going to point down. If this is going to be zero, I'm going to say 16, it's going to go right. This is the value that we're going to be editing. I'm going to leave it like this for now. And we're going to set that value through code. And we can do that very easily because we already have the direction. We're just going to have to multiply it by 16. So raycast to the target position is direction times 16. So now we're going to get a vector 2 with one value, 16 minus 16, other value 0. It's going to set the target position to the direction you're looking at. Once we do that, we need to force this raycast to update because we cannot wait for the next frame in order to have this raycast detect a collision shape. We need to force it to immediately update and detect collision. If we don't do that, it won't work. And we can do that by calling this function on the, the raycast, force raycast update. It will force it to update its raycast, its collision detection in the same frame after we've adjusted the target position. And then we can simply say, if raycast.2d has a function called is colliding, and that means that it, it's detecting one or more things it's colliding with and we're only interested in if it's actually colliding with anything because it already signals that we can't move there and if we can move there we're going to return because we don't want to move the player into something we cannot move into and i think that's it so let's check it out you can actually see the target position of the raycast moving around and once we get next to the ghost we want to move left we point to the left Update the raycast. The raycast detects collision. We can't move. And if we come from far away, it also does that. If we stand next to it and move, it also does that. I hope you learned something, and uh, I'll probably see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.